Bubbles rising through the silence of the sea. Silvery beads of breath from a man deep, deep down in a strange and shimmering ocean land. Of swaying plants and fantastic creatures. A man fish swimming, diving into the unknown. Exploring underwater worlds no one had ever seen and no one could ever have imagined. Our story starts many years before in France with a little baby boy born under the summer sun. His parents named him Jock. From the very beginning, little Jock loved water. The way it fell on his hands, his face, his body, and water made him wonder. He wondered why ships floated, why he floated, and why rocks sank. One day, Jocks read a story about a man who hid underwater by breathing through a long tube. Jocks tried it and discovered it was impossible. He dreamed that someday he would be able to breathe underwater for real. At night, Jocks dreamed he could fly with the birds among the clouds with his arms stretched out like wings. Jock spent his days playing, experimenting, and creating. He wrote little books that he illustrated with his own drawings, and he was fascinated by machines. He studied blueprints and built a model of a crane that was as tall as he was and actually worked. Movies fascinated Jocks too. He wanted to know how they were made, how the cameras worked, and how chemicals made pictures appear on the film. Jocks saved his allowance penny by penny until he had enough to buy a small home movie camera. The first thing he did was take it apart and put it back together. Then he began to film everything around him. He put his brother, cousins, parents, and friends in his movies. He dressed up as a villain with a painted on mustache and made some very villainous films. Jocks was always the star, the director, the writer, and usually the cameraman. When Jocks finished school, he joined the French Navy. His ship sailed all around the world, and everywhere he went, he filmed what he saw. In China, he filmed men catching fish with their bare hands. They held their breath underwater for many minutes. Jocks wondered what that would be like. One day, at a beach, a friend gave Jocks a pair of goggles with rubber frames and glass to look through. Jocks wore them into the ocean. Beneath the water, he was surrounded by silvery green forests of sea plants and fish he had never seen before. Everything was silent and shimmering. It was a whole new world. When he came up, he saw cars, people, buildings, and telephone poles. Once again, he went below into the magical underwater world. At that moment, Jocks knew his life was changed forever. His eyes had been opened to the wonders of the sea. Jocks and his friends, Philippi and Dee Dee, began to dive together. They experimented to see how long they could stay underwater and how deep they could go. Jocks created a waterproof case for his camera to film the amazing kingdom he and his friends were exploring beneath the surface. They made rubber suits to keep themselves warm and flippers to help them kick better. But Jocks wanted to stay down longer than just one breath at a time. He realized he needed to take more air with him, enough air to explore the mysterious depths and vast expanses of the ocean. To swim through the sea as free as a fish, he wanted to become a man fish, and he began to work on just how to do it. On a warm summer day, Jacques stepped into the blue Mediterranean Sea with his new invention. He called it the aqua lung because aqua means water and our lungs are the part of our body that hold the air we breathe. Below the surface, Jock swam and glided and dove. He did flips and somersaults. 
He stood upside down on one finger and laughed bubbles into the sea. Drax could breathe beneath the water. Now he could swim across the miles of ocean, his body feeling what only seals had felt. His eyes seeing what only fish had seen. The water made him feel like he was flying, just like in his dreams. Drax had done it. He had become a man fish. Jock was ready to explore the oceans of the world. He needed a boat and found a big old wooden navy ship named Calypso. In a year, he turned it from a warship into an explorer ship. Jocks, Philippi, and Didi gathered a crew, their aqualungs, their hopes, and their dreams, and set off to explore the inside of the sea to film a world that no one had ever seen before. On their journeys, they dove deep into a seascape of plants. Green and purple prickly plants, red branchy plants, spongy plants, wispy feathery, swayy plants, slow dancing to the rhythms of the ocean. They discovered plants that, you could, fi that could feed you, plants that could poison you, plants that look like fish, and fish that look like plants. Their cameras captured camouflaged scorpion fish ugly as toads with poisonous spines. Dorota's brilliant, shining fish that glowed the color of emeralds, sapphires, and rubies. Checkerboard fish with red and white checks from head to tail. Everywhere the Calypso went, Jock and his friend and his crew made films of what they saw. Films that played in movie theaters. Films that played on TV. Millions of people all over the world discovered the wonders of the sea for the very first time with Jock, Philippi, Dee Dee, and their adventurous crew. After Jock spent most of his life making movies about the sea, he saw something happening, something shocking. Plants that used to be alive and healthy were being poisoned. Fish were sick and dying. Jacques saw that people, without realizing it, were slowly killing the sea and its creatures by dumping garbage and poisonous chemicals into the ocean he loved so much. Jacques knew what he had to do. He had to make movies, movies to warn people, movies to save the sea. Jacques also spoke to presidents, to kings and queens, to people all over the earth, asking them to help save our oceans, our planet. And he spoke to children. Jacques dreamed that someday it would be you exploring worlds never seen, never imagined. Whole new worlds, silent and shimmering. Worlds that are now yours to discover, to care for, and to love. 